Greetings again, AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here, and I'm going to follow up the video that we just took a look at. Hopefully that you may have caught the example one from my 10.8, all about the ratio test. I know it was a long video. I wanted to cover all four of those very special examples with example one, but I'm going to trade that off with you with a really short video. We're going to cover this thing called the root test. So this root test is a little bit uh, uh, optional, I guess I should say, if you're an AP Calc BC student, because it is not tested on the Calc BC exam. However, if you feel like using it, it could certainly save you some time. You're always welcome to do so, as it is legitimate calculus, but it's not going to specifically be tested. You're going to find out the root test works really well if you've got a series that involves some kind of a nth power to it. We'll see that in a moment. So what is this root test? Well, let's say you've got yourself a series. The summation of a sub n, it will converge absolutely if the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of that nth term expression is less than one. So the good news here is that you still have the same conclusion. A less than one is converges, just like the ratio test. The different thing is, is that you're not taking the limit of some ratio of the nth plus one term over the nth term anymore. You're taking the limit of the nth root. Same thing as for option two. Your summation will diverge if that limit were greater than one, or of course, if that limit were infinity. Now, once again, if you spend the time and you do your limit, you do it correctly and you get an answer of one, it's sort of disheartening because that just means the ratio test is not going to tell you anything. And therefore, you probably ought to check out another test. But as I said before, it's probably likely that you would have located that other test first. Uh, just for whatever it's worth, if you try the root test with a p-series, it will be a royal waste of time because you're always going to get a limit of one. Uh, it's very likely that you're probably going to use the p-series test when you're seeing a p-series anyway. All right, so let's take a look at our example here. And boom, there's that summation that we want to look at. Determine the convergence or divergence of the following series. Now, I know that it's very likely that you could use the ratio test for this. And it probably works. But let's stick to our brand new test that we just spoke about. Let's set this up using this uh, root test and see where it takes us. So what do we have here? Well, we're going to start this off by saying that we want to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of e to the 2n e to the 2n power divided by n to the nth power finish up our absolute value move our square root or nth root i should say over and those are the first steps right there now the next step is to start to think about a few things first of all again what kind of role do the absolute values really play in other words, is e to the 2n ever going to run the risk of being negative when n starts with 1? And the answer is no. Just like n to the n will not run the risk of being negative. Now, what I would say is, as with all things in calculus, radicals don't seem to play nicely. So instead of taking an nth root, please understand that that is the same thing as raising to the 1 over n power. So I could take e to the 2n power over n to the n, and I could think of raising all of this to the 1 over n power. And at that point, we could use our rule that says whenever you have an exponent that's raised to another exponent, you would multiply those exponents. So that takes us to this step nearing the end, of course, e to the 2n to the 1 over n, multiply those powers, and all you have left is an e squared. Those n's will cancel. Likewise, in the denominator, n to the n raised to the 1 over n is just n to the first. Let your n approach infinity all day long. Constant over something really big is going to be basically 0 as that denominator gets big. 
Last time I checked, zero is less than one. So that looks like we meet the first criteria. And so therefore, we can say that this series converges. Now I know that you might say, oh, should we say absolutely converges? You're certainly welcome to do that. I only really ask that my students distinguish conditional versus absolute convergence if we are dealing with an alternating series. Because if you have a series that converges and it's not alternating, then the assumption is that it always will converge absolutely. So we can get by with just writing converges at this point, even on the AP exam. There it is. That's the one example for the root test. It's likely that you may not use this much at all. Uh, sometimes, like I said before, in lieu of the root test, just go ahead and use the ratio test. But I will say this, a lot of times the root test does require a little bit less writing, a little bit less effort, so it's definitely worth investigating. Our next video rounds out everything that we've talked about up to this point in topic 10.8, and you're going to get a lot of really wonderful practice with all different sorts of our convergence tests. So you want to check out example three, the review of the convergence test. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.